Welcome to lecture 8 of module 3 of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, what we have done so far is that we have been applying Game Theory in various situations of economics uh, or pertaining to political science. So, currently we have been discussing how the concept of Nash equilibrium in strategic game uh, can be used in the context of elections and uh, we have seen that in the standard model which is known as the hoteling model, uh, both the candidates if we have two candidates will announce the position which is the median favorite position of all the voters. Uh, so, that is one fundamental result that we have got. And we have been uh, looking into uh, other variations of this model. Suppose, uh, instead of two candidates, if we have three candidates, then what is the result? Does the result change compared to the basic uh, hoteling result? Or for example, uh, if the preferences of the voters are a little different, not symmetric, but asymmetric, then does the result change? Uh, like that, we have been discussing the various uh, aspects, variations of the original hoteling model. So, today also we shall look into some other variations of this basic model. Uh, the first variation is the following. So, suppose that the voters are divided between two districts. District 1 is worth more electoral college votes than is district 2. The winner is the candidate who obtains the most electoral college votes. So, basically uh, the winner is decided not directly by the voters, but how many electoral college votes the winner gets, uh, the candidate gets. And there are two electoral colleges, one and two. One is having more electoral college votes than two. Denoted by M1, the median favorite position among the citizens of district by MI, the median favorite position among the citizens of district I uh, for I 1, 2, assume that M2 is less than, strictly less than M1. Each of two candidates chooses uh, a single position each citizen votes non-strategically for the candidate whose position is closest to her favorite position. The candidate who wins a majority of votes in a district obtains all the electoral college votes of that district. If the candidates obtain the same number of votes in a district, uh, they each obtain half of the electoral college votes in that district find the Nash equilibrium or equilibria of the strategic game that models this situation. So, in simple language what we have is the following, there are two districts So, you can think of in Indian context to be two states. However, there are differences of the Indian system, Indian electoral system from this system, uh, which is this, uh, described in this question. And each having an electoral college. And uh, District 1 has more electoral college votes than 2. So, uh, by the Indian simile, uh, an electoral college is like a, a Vidhan Sava, the state legislature and uh, in district 1, the legislature, state legislature is bigger, it has more seats than uh, district 2. And whoever the candidate 
he is who uh, gets the more electoral college votes is the winner. So, he is not uh, elected directly by the people, but by the people who are being elected to the electoral college. And if a candidate uh, gets the majority of the votes uh, in a particular district, he gets all the uh, electoral college votes of that district. So, all the uh, all the people in the electoral college uh, will vote for him in that case, that can be visualized in, the, in that sense. So, this is the setting, furthermore we know that M 1, the median favorite position in district 1 is more than M 2, which is the median favorite position in district 2. Each candidate announces a single position and based on that, uh, people in both the districts decide whom to vote for. They can either vote for uh, player 1 and player 2. So, I can think of this in the previous uh, manner as this number line on which the favorite positions of all the voters are represented and M 2 is to the left of M 1, M 1 is higher. A uh, question is what is the Nash equilibrium in this game? By the way, if in a district uh, the two players get the same number of votes, the half of the voters are voting for player 1 and half of the voters are voting for player 2, then the electoral college votes of that district are, uh, they are equally divided between these two candidates. Otherwise, if I get even more than half, just a little bit more than my rival, then I get all the electoral college votes of that district. So, what is the Nash equilibrium? Let us look uh, now at another aspect which is an important aspect of this electoral games that we are studying. This is the aspect where we talk about <coughs> the fact that the, uh, the, the like the citizens, the candidates may also be uh, ideologically driven in the sense that they also may care about the positions that they take. Because so far we have assumed, uh, if you remember, that the position that the candidates take, uh, th those positions do not matter to the candidates. What matters to the candidates uh, is, the, is whether they are winning or not. So, that is what we can relax. Uh, it may happen that the candidates also, <coughs> uh, like the citizens, care about what position that they are taking. Not only th what position they are taking, we can uh, take a more stronger case, they care about the position of the winner itself. It may happen that they lose, I as a candidate may lose, but if the winner's position is closer to my favorite position, that could be the good thing for me, a good thing for me. Uh, so, that is what we are going to look at in this problem. <coughs> Here is the problem the candidates like the citizens care about the winner's position and not at all about winning per se. So, this is just the extremely opposite case. There are two candidates, each candidate has a favorite position, her dislike for other positions increases with their distance from her favorite position. Uh, assume that the favorite position of one candidate is less than M and the favorite position of the other candidate is greater than M. Assume also that if candidates tie when they take the positions x1 and x2, then the outcome is the compromise policy x1 plus x2 divided by 2. 
find the set of Nash equilibria of the strategic game that models this situation. So, here uh, the setting is as in the original setting, here I have the median favorite position of all the voters and I have to demarcate two favorite positions of two candidates and it is given that uh, x 1 star it is the favorite position of the first candidate and this is suppose less than m and less than x, x 2 star which is the favorite position of the second candidate. So, x 2 star is here somewhere, m is the favorite median favorite position of the voters. This exercise is called electoral competition for more general preferences. Let me first write down the question and then we shall try to solve the exercise. So, this is the question. 
this is the description of the problem. Suppose there is a finite number of positions and a finite odd number of voters. For any positions x and y, each voter either prefers x to y or prefers y to x, no voter is indifferent between two positions. We say that a position x star is a Condorcet winner if for every position different from x star, every position y different from x star, a majority voters prefer uh, x star over y. So, this is how we define a Condorcet winner. Now, there are three questions. One, show that for any configuration of preferences, there is at most one Condorcet winner, which basically means that uh, either there is just one winner or there is no winner. Now, what is the proof? Uh, <coughs> if there are two Condorcet winners, then suppose x and y, then since x is a winner, a majority of voters prefer x to y, but since y is also a winner, a majority of voters prefer y to x but this is a contra contradiction. So, at most one winner is possible, right. So, that is the proof B. B is saying that give an example in which no Condorcet winner exists. So, we have to just construct an example where uh, there are no Condorcet winners. So, let be three positions and let 3 voters 1, 2 and 3. So, these voters are called voter 1, voter 2 and voter 3.
let the preferences of the voters are as follows. So, this is the preference of the first voter, uh, this is rank 1, rank 2 and rank 3. So, he prefers x over y and y over z and we shall be assuming that uh, they follow transitivity that is if x is preferred to y and y is preferred to z then if x is preferred to z. <coughs> then we have player 2 and whose preference is the following. Here y is appearing in rank 1, uh, z is appearing in rank 2 and x is appearing in rank 3. So, player 2 prefers y to a z and z to x and we have player 3 whose preference is the following that he prefers z to x and x to y. Now, I am claiming in this case there is no Condorcet winner. Why? Let us pick up uh, one pair between say x and y. Who gets how much vote? Uh, player 1 prefers x to y, player 2 prefers y to x and player 3 prefers x to y. So, between x and y x gets 2 votes 1 and 3 and y gets just 1 vote 2. So, uh, x is in this case preferred to x defeats y all right <coughs> between x and y x is better x wins the majority of the votes uh, between y and z let us look at y and z y gets how many votes uh, 1 prefers y over z 2 prefers y over z, 3 prefers z over y. So, y gets 2 votes, z gets 1 vote. So, y defeats z, x defeats y, y defeats z. Now, let us look at between z and x ok x uh, is preferred to z by x but for 2 and 3 z is preferred to x so z gets 2 votes x gets 1 vote so z defeats x now, which basically means that there is no Condorcet winner. Right? Because between x and y, x wins, but between x and z, z wins. Again, uh, is z the Condorcet winner? No, z is again defeated by y. Is y the Condorcet winner? No, y is defeated by x. So, we have a kind of circular uh, pattern 
that x is defeating y, y is defeating z, but z is defeating x and so there is no Condorcet winner in this uh, preference. Let us look at the last part of the question. So, this is the question consider a strategic game in which two candidates simultaneously choose positions and as in hoteling as in hoteling scheme. If the candidates choose different positions each voter endorses the candidate whose position he prefers and the candidate who receives the most votes wins. If the candidates choose the same position they tie show that the game has a unique Nash equilibrium 
if the voters preferences are such that there is a Condorcet winner and has no Nash equilibrium, if the voters preferences are such that there is no Condorcet winner. So, we shall start with the first case, case 1. Suppose there is a Condorcet winner at suppose x star. Now, to show that uh, there is a Nash equilibrium at a, uh, in this case. <coughs> now, my claim is that the Nash equilibrium is where each of two candidates choose x star. This is a Nash equilibrium. Now, proof. Okay. Uh, since x is a Condorcet winner, any candidate choosing y different from x x star will lose. So, deviation is unprofitable. In fact, it is strictly bad. Now, this proves that x star is a Nash equilibrium, but what is the pr proof that this is the uh, only Nash equilibrium? Is there any other Nash equilibrium? Uh, suppose the candidates choose other positions other than other positions than X star. Now, for each now in such a situation, if there is a tie. each can choose x star and outrightly win. So, this is not Nash equilibrium. If there is a win then the loser can choose x star and defeat the winner. So, once again this is not Nash equilibrium. 
So, we have ruled out all possibilities and we have seen that X star is the only Nash equilibrium. Uh, the second part case 2 that there is no Condorcet winner if there is no Condorcet winner then for any position chosen by the other candidate the first candidate let us say y the first candidate uh, can choose x which which defeats y, but then the second candidate can choose z which defeats x and so on. So, in this case since there is no Condorcet winner uh, the there is no Nash equilibrium for any uh, configuration of positions chosen by the two candidates uh, a person who is losing can change his position and pick a Condorcet pick a another position to defeat the winner and so on. If they are tying they are tying at a particular position, but again that is not an equilibrium uh, because the position which defeats this position can be chosen by any of the candidates and again uh, he can do better for himself. So, therefore, in this case no Nash equilibrium exists. So, this is an exercise uh, about product character characteristics. Okay. This is again a variant of the Hotelings model.
Okay, this is the question. In the variant of Hotelling's model that captures competing firms choice of product characteristics show that when there are two firms the unique Nash equilibrium is M M. Both firms offer the consumers median favorite product and when there are three firms there is no Nash equilibrium. Okay. Uh, so, there are two parts to this question. First two firms case. In this case we have to show that the unique Nash equilibrium is at M M. M is the median of the favorite positions of the consumers. How to show this? <coughs> Suppose first we show that M M is the equilibrium and then we show that there is no other equilibrium. Why M M is the equilibrium? Because if the other firm chooses M, the first firm cannot deviate and get more than 50 percent of consumers which it is getting right now. Right at M M every consumer every firm is getting 50 percent of the consumers. Now, if any firm deviates and chooses some other characteristic other than M, uh, then the total percentage of consumers that it will get will surely drop from 50 percent, it will get less than 50 percent and therefore, M M is an equilibrium is an equilibrium. Why there is no other equilibrium? Well, let uh, the firms choose x x, where x is not equal to m. Is this an equilibrium? This is not an equilibrium. Because each firm can deviate and choose M whereby its consumer base will be more than 50 percent and 50 percent is what uh, it is getting at x x. So, this is not an equilibrium. Uh, if there is a tie where firms choose different uh, characteristics then each can do better by choosing characteristics more similar to its rival 
right. So, therefore, neither is this an equilibrium. If there is a win loss situation, if there is a winner, then of course, the loser can tie at least tie by choosing M. So, no other configuration of actions is an equilibrium. So, no other equilibrium exists. Okay, so, first part is done. What about the second part? Second part is where we have three firms. Now, if we have three firms, if the firms choose M, all the firms are choosing the median position, then each can deviate on either side. and get close to 50 percent market share. Right? This is higher than uh, one third share it is getting at M. M M. So, a profitable division exists. So, M M M is not equilibrium, not equilibrium. Uh, if there is a tie other than M M M then uh, at least one candidate, one uh, firm can make its product more similar to its rival product, to its rivals product okay, uh, and be better off. This firm is a firm choosing an extreme <coughs> characteristic. So, if there is a tie and uh, the firms are choosing different characteristics, then at least one firm will be there who is choosing uh, characteristics to one side that is why we are calling it an extreme characteristic uh, to change its uh, product and make its product more similar to the rivals to its rivals product and if it does so, then it will be better off. It is like this. Suppose, this firm one is choosing here and firm 2 or 3 are choosing somewhere here same position 2, 3. Then this firm and there is a tie suppose, then this firm can go to this side and capture a higher share of the market. Uh, if they are choosing all different positions and sharing the market equally again both these firms can uh, come inside and increase the market share. So, 
tie is not possible. Tie is ruled out and if there is a loser, if there is no tie, then it can of course, it can of course, uh, mimic or make its products more similar to the other firm's product, uh, make its product more similar to other firms product and be better off. So, therefore, we see that there is no Nash equilibrium in this case. We shall talk about some other applications of Nash equilibrium in the next lecture. Thank you. In the electoral college voting problem, if the number of electoral college votes in two districts is same, does the result remain the same? So, uh, just uh, to refresh our memory, what was the electoral college voting problem? Two populations are there and therefore, two electoral colleges are there and these electoral college members elect uh, suppose a president. Okay. Now, uh, how are these electoral college members chosen? These electoral college members are chosen from these two populations or rather districts. Uh, we have seen that if the number of electoral college votes in district 1 is more in than in district 2, and if m 1 is greater than m 2, there is a median uh, favorite position in district 1 is more than median favorite position in district 2. Then m 1 m 1 is the unique Nash equilibrium. So, this is what we have seen here the question is the following that number of electoral college votes in two districts is the same. So, we have a change in assumption here. Uh, so, here this is equal to this other things remain the same. Then is this the unique Nash equilibrium that is the question and the answer is no. Uh, the complete answer is the following. M 1 M 1 is 
a Nash equilibrium, but there are now other Nash equilibrium also. How do I know that? Well, let us look at m 1 m 1. So, this is m 2 suppose and this is m 1, this is district 1 and this is district 2. Now, why m 1 m 1 is still a Nash equilibrium? The reason is that uh, if both the candidates announce m 1, then obviously, uh, since they are announcing the same position there is a tie. Okay. Now, suppose player 2 uh, is considering a deviation, player 2 announces something less than m 1. What happens then? Well, uh, uh, player 2 gets all these votes of district 2 and uh, player 1 gets all these votes of district 2 which means player 2 wins district 2. However, uh, player 1 wins district 1, right? player 1 wins district 1. So, player 2 wins district 2, player 1 dis wants, uh, wins district 1 and we know that the number of electoral college votes in both the districts is the same. Uh, so, uh, the tie remains. Uh, the, 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 there was a tie in m 1 m 1, there is a tie now also if layer 2 deviates to something less than m 1. So, uh, m 1 m 1 uh, remains an equilibrium because there could be another deviation player 2 could deviate to the right. However, if player 2 deviates to the right we can show that player 2 uh, loses both the districts player 1 then becomes the outright winner. So, deviation by player 2 is not profitable therefore, m 1 m 1 is a Nash equilibrium, okay. but this demonstration itself shows us that there could be other Nash equilibrium also. <coughs> One Nash equilibrium for example, could be m 1 m 2. So, here player 1 is announcing m 1, player 2 is announcing m 2. Uh, this means that player 2 will win district 2 and player 1 will win district 1 and so, there will be equal division of the electoral college votes and uh, that will be a tie. and this is a Nash equilibrium, because you cannot deviate and win uh, outrightly, none of the players can do that. In fact, uh, any pair which lies in this range from m 2 to m 1 uh, can be thought of to be an equilibrium, uh, this can be done as an exercise that if I take any pair suppose x x which is uh, such that x lies between m 1 and m 2 is Nash equilibrium. Okay. Uh, in this case also there is going to be tie, uh, but what is happening here is that suppose this is x if player 2 deviates to some to the to the left of x uh, again he wins district 2 but loses district 1 at x x obviously uh, they are in a tying position in both the districts so there is an overall tie so there are infinite number of equilibrium therefore in this case thank you